This is my rather belated review of the Sony Bloggy Touch MHS TS20 camera. Now the reason I got this camera was because I was rather interested in this 360 degree video function. Now to be able to record 360 degree video on a bloggy touch you need this additional lens attachment. This is known as the VCL BPP2 and although you should be able to get it separately I couldn't source one from anywhere without having to buy the camera at the same time. Now if you want the lens and the camera it's the MHS TS 20K. The K stands for kit and the kit means it includes the lens because you can buy the camera without that additional 360 degree lens. But for the moment we'll put that lens to one side and just have a look at the camera itself. Now this is a really beautiful piece of electronics. Sony really do know how to put things together sometimes. It's some sort of brushed aluminium with a chrome bit on the top. Everything has perfect fit and finish. It's really nicely made. Now if you press that bit at the bottom there, the USB port pops out. You've got a shutter and a camera on off button there. That, those holes there, that's the microphone and that hole on the left there, that's the speaker. And round on the bottom here you've got a little flap that you can pop open to put in a micro HDMI lead to better play back your footage through a television. Let's just have a look at the weight. It's 120.7 grams or 4.26 ounces according to my drug scales. Now if we just look at some more specs while we're here, we've got an 8 gigabyte built-in memory that's not expandable. 1080p video, it'll do an hour and 23 on a completely formatted camera or 720p 34 hours 17. It's MP4 AVC and the battery life is 1 hour 50 minutes. Now that lens on there is autofocus but it is not a zoom lens, it's a fixed lens. We'll just switch the camera on by holding this on off button down for a second and it'll just power up. It's got a beautiful big screen on the back. It's a touch screen, capacitive touch screen, but it's really nice and clear and sharp. Now we'll just tap it in the middle to bring those icons up. You notice on the right here the zoom lever is a virtual zoom lever. You have to touch the screen to use it and of course as I mentioned before it doesn't have an optical zoom, this is a digital zoom, so it's best avoid as usual that one. The button on the right is the record start stop, as you can see there, it's recording with that red dot at the top left, and if I press it again it stops recording and goes back to this screen here. Now the top right button there is a camera shutter button, that's for taking photographs, that's all that button does. And you just hold it down like a normal camera and it'll take a photograph. Now let's have a look at some of these settings. The bottom left button there, self timer. Now that's something that I can't really see many people using on a camera like this, so it's quite unusual that they put it on there. The top right button lets you change the different photo resolutions and movie resolutions. So you've got 12 megapixel 4.3 stills, 8 megapixel 16.9 stills, or you can do 2 megapixel 16.9 stills if you want. And then on movie size you've got 1080p 30, 720p 60 and 720p 30. And of course you saw how long you can record on each of those in that previous slide. Let's go in the settings here. Now you have to show this in a vertical orientation, it doesn't flip round. You can see in there there's nothing really interesting in the settings. It's the kind of things that once you've set them you just leave it. The only thing that I've really used in there more than once is the format menu. Now notice I'm having a little bit of trouble pressing back here. Uh, more about the sensitivity of the screen later. Now those icons on the screen will reorientate depending on what um, orientation you've got the camera in. So you can have it vertically like this, or you can even flip the camera completely upside down, which means the zoom lever is on the left hand side rather than on the right, or you can even film this way. Whichever way you have it up, once you've started recording in that um, orientation, the camera sticks to it. So it doesn't matter if you start recording that way and then flip it that way, it's always going to be that way around. Now let's just have a look at this 360 degree lens attachment. It comes in this little plastic box, I suppose that's to keep your sort of grubby fingers off it. It's magnetic, so when you tap the camera to it, it sticks to the top of it like this. As far as I can tell, this attachment's all plastic. Even the lenses, I think, inside are sort of plastic mirrors and things. Um, but we won't go into testing that just yet, we'll uh, again put it to one side and I'm going to show you some video that I took with the camera without that lens attachment on it. So here's some stuff that I took in Manchester. 
This is in the 1080p mode, of course the YouTube video is in 720p, but I think you're about to tell that this is really nice and sharp and clear. Now I'm going to show you some 720p footage as well, which is on the screen now. Now you might not be able to tell the difference from that zoomed out, so I'm going to zoom in and put them side by side. You'll see the 1080p on the left there is a little bit sharper than the 720p on the right, as it should be. Now we'll just do a test with sort of light to dark, which is something cameras sometimes struggle with. So pointing up into the sky and you'll see that it copes well and that lamp is still in focus. Now under the right conditions, this camera can take really nice video. There's a lot going on here and everything's sharp from the front to the back and all the corners. It depends on the light. Some of it's a little bit bleached out perhaps on the left there. You can take things in that vertical orientation, but I think you've got to be a bit of a lunatic to do that, and I'd always take things in this orientation to avoid those big stupid bars on everything. Although, I suppose there are occasions when it might come in handy, like in this rather narrow alley, where you can see the tops of those buildings and the road, whereas if I was to hold the camera in the normal orientation, uh, you just sort of see the middle of everything. Now against all odds this camera does take decent photos. This is a still that you're looking at now taken in 16.9 and this is a still in 4.3. You notice the 4.3 shows a lot more on screen. Let's look at that again. This is a 4.3 photo now and then let's have a look at a 16.9. On the same spot you notice it's all zoomed in towards the middle. The 16.9 just seems to be a crop of the 4.3. Again we're looking at 4.3 now with the bars either side and 16.9 is just the crop of the middle of it. So if you're taking any photos take them in 4.3 mode. You can always crop them later if you want. Now there is a bit of an issue with this camera and that's to do with focusing. Just look at this tram going past now. It's all in focus nice and sharp. It goes out of the way and look everything behind it's out of focus. Just wait for a second. There you go. It's in focus now. So that was a bit of a delay. Let's zoom in towards the middle and show that again. We're all out of focus for a few seconds here before it regains its focus again. Now I'm going to show you that again on another scene. This is uh, me again following a tram across, but this time the tram itself just goes out of focus halfway through. It might be a little bit hard for you to spot that on YouTube, so again I'm going to zoom in towards the middle. Just look at the number on the front of the tram here, 3015, and just about there it's gone out of focus now. Now the whole scene remains out of focus throughout for this period until it just gains it again somewhere there. So that's a bit of a problem. Now let's have a look at some of this 360 degree footage stuff. I was hoping to get an effect like this. Now this is just an iPad app that someone's demonstrated some 360 degree footage took with professional equipment, not with one of these cameras. But I was hoping to get an effect similar to this, obviously not going to be as good as this. And this is actually what I got. Unfortunately, when you take video with this camera, there's very little that you can do with it afterwards. You can record it, but trying to play it back or incorporate it in anything is a bit of a nightmare. The only way that I found to play it back and really sort of have a look around the footage as I was playing it was in the software that came with the camera. And as you can see, I'm doing that now. I'm panning across the bit at the bottom and it's showing on the top what's happening in that particular section of the scene but you'll probably also notice that the footage is really soft and blurry there's a kind of line across the bottom of it as well where everything seems to reflect back on itself it's very disappointing i mean i wasn't expecting it to be as good as that other thing but this stuff's just useless really it's obviously just some kind of novelty you can almost watch the guy get knocked down actually by the way here look for this guy running in front of the bus now and just misses it what was he trying to do he was actually trying to catch a bus when a bus nearly caught him but anyway that's another story now when you attach that lens to the top of the camera it notices it's there and it changes it to this kind of circle thing here which makes it very hard to frame anything so really that 360 degree attachment thing is just a novelty it's not to be taken seriously and to be honest it's a complete waste of time now the software that comes with the camera is built into it you can't really delete it and you can install it on your computer on a mac you have to download some separate software because the software on the camera isn't mac compatible but it's pretty much the same program i believe which looks like this it enables you to do some editing and copy the files across and things now if you attach a micro hdmi lead to the camera you can play back on the camera screen and also on the television at the same time so you select a clip on the camera like this photo and this is the television screen showing the same photo and you can play video in the same way or sort of slide through your different photos that you've got on it.
But unfortunately, again, if you try and play a 360 degree video on it, this is what you're going to get on your TV screen. Just one of those 360 degree circles again. You can't pan across it or do anything better. Now, look at this screen here. You'll see at the bottom right, you see that spinning logo there? That's because it's thinking. The camera does quite a bit of thinking. The touch sensitive screen isn't very touch sensitive at times. In fact, it starts to drive you mad after a bit when you're sort of prodding away and you're not too sure whether you're going to accidentally select something or try and select something and get nothing at all. It's a bit irritating. And unfortunately, you never really get used to it. Another thing that I've got a problem with with that touch screen is that zoom lever. I don't want a digital zoom on a camera. I'd rather be able to switch it off, but unfortunately you can't switch it off on this camera. It's always going to be there. And unfortunately you also end up tapping it by accident an awful lot of the time and finding that you've just shot some video with it zoomed in when you didn't realize that you'd actually knock that lever up. But those things put to one side, this camera can take some really nice sharp video. Under the right circumstances, it will take really bright, clear, sharp 1080p video. And it will also take really quite decent photographs, much to my surprise. This camera's taught me one thing. And that's that I shouldn't really be interested in 360 degree video anymore. Now, I know this camera's done a very poor implementation of it. It's soft and blurry. You can't play it back anywhere. But the whole concept of 360 degree video is a little bit flawed anyway. I mean, you're always going to find yourself looking in the wrong direction. I quite like the idea still, though, of 360 degree photos, because with those you take a photo of a moment in time and then later on you can explore that moment and find details that you didn't realize were there when you took the photo. That photo I've shown you there was part of the Tamago 360 degree imager website. That was a camera announced earlier on in the year and I'm a little bit concerned it might never come out but if it does I'll definitely be getting hold of one of those because I find that a lot more interesting than this idea. However you can see why Sony tried to do something different with this camera because they were getting their lunch eaten by these smartphones. The smartphones cameras now have got so good that really there's no need to have a separate pocket camera like a bloggy. So in an attempt to do something the smartphones don't, Sony starts selling a camera that does 360 degree video or like the earlier bloggy I reviewed records in 3D. But of course, it doesn't take long then for the smartphone accessory makers to sell 360 degree video attachments or the smartphone manufacturers to start making 3D recording smartphones. So Sony's pocket camera range is squeezed even further. So this year, the only bloggy that you can get hold of in the UK is this kind of ruggedized model. And of course, ruggedized is something that smartphones don't really do yet. So you can see why they've done that. But that then means that the older models like this bloggy TS20 that I've just reviewed or the 3D one can be picked up at rock bottom prices now. So if you want one, now will be the time to get hold of one. Now, if you're interested in trying to play back some of that 360 degree video yourself, I've put some samples up on my website together with some 1080p and 720p video and photos from this camera. But for the moment, thanks for watching.